train asked me to go and play finish out the the, uh, the uh, engagement with Jimmy Smith. We talked about that in, in, in for a long time. So he said, look, never say you can't do nothing. Always be optimistic, always positive. You, you can do it. He said, if I thought you was, wouldn't, be, wouldn't be able to do this, I never would have asked you. He said, you can do it. You get with me, I give you some ideas and some pointers what we've been doing, and you can do it. So at that point, he was going to play with Miles Davis. But playing with Jimmy Smith for the rest of that engagement at the Spot of Killers, which is on Mole Street in Center City, is no longer there. But playing with Jimmy Smith for that period of time, after doing that, my name got spread around a little bit, and I started working, and I worked. I, shortly after that, I got the job with Tiny Grimes. Thank you. 
Tonight, I'm working with some of the greatest minds that's walking planet Earth. Yes. And speaking of Lee Smith on Improvisation. And that's to loosen everybody up to give everybody a sense of what the rhythm is about. It's all about the rhythm. I was really lucky to be right in the area. Like Benny Gosen was two blocks, in fact, not even two blocks, he was on French Street. And right across Susquehanna Avenue, I was on the opposite side of Susquehanna Avenue. He was on the, the south side, and I was on the north side. So and I used to get compositions and also get information from Benny Gosen because during that period, it seemed like the musicians was very sharing. They would share ideas and concepts. They would come together and collaborate and do like clinics together. You know, it was just so much music. It was so many ideas floating around and so many things to do during that period. Then, of course, there was so many bars that the musicians could play, which I could just name on uh, which, which is Cecil B. Moore now, that was Columbia Avenue. That was the 820 Club at 8th and uh, Cecil B. Moore. That was the Cafe Society at 12th and Cecil B. Moore Avenue. Across the west side of, of Broad Street, that was the Crystal Bar, the Ware Bar, the Zanza Bar, the North by, the North by Northwest, and the Point. So, just on that strip alone, it was like about about 10 venues where the musicians could play. The place where I used to go and listen to Clifford Brown and Wilbur Camel was one block from me, a place called Bill and Lou's at 17th and Dolphin. I used to go and stand outside during the summer. During the summer, uh, they used to keep the door open. They didn't have the air condition. They keep the doors, the doors open, and I used to stand outside and watch uh, Clifford Brown and Wilbur Camel, and that was like going to the highest institution in the whole world. So the next piece, 965, which means we're playing the first segment in 94, the second segment in 64, and the third segment is in 54, and we solo in 94 and 54. Thank you. 
Yes, yes. For those of you who might be inter interested in contemporary music, let me just tell you a little bit about our contemporary music. That was a 9-4 piece you were accustomed to hear 4-4. Four, four. But this particular composition, which consists of 9-6-4, nine, 9 beats, 6 beats, 5 beats. And to improvise over that is very complex, and you need some great musicians that This next piece, also a original composition by myself, Fresh Breeze.
I was about 17 years old, uh, and Train and I, well, I, I lived on Colorado Street. Train lived on 33rd, and Hassan lived on Grad Street. Benny Gosen lived on French Street. It was, we was all like close neighbors. But what really happened, we was rehearsing with, with uh, Hassan and Minali. Train and I, we was playing, we used to play duets, we used to play trio with Hassan and Minali. And I can tell you, every, Three notes that everybody played came from, that's coming from Philadelphia. Hassan is, they played two or three of Hassan's notes. We lived about three blocks, uh, he lived about three blocks away from me. And one day I was practicing in my mother's basement. And uh, he came by and heard me, he knocked on the window. So I went to the door. So he said, I heard you playing, and you sound like you are stretching for some things that I would like to also share with you. He said, I live about three blocks from you. Why don't you come maybe two or three times a week? And you and I said, and you play some of my music, and you know we can share the ideas. But Hassan was that person that was so advanced. He, was, he, would, he would play substitutions, like for an example, like a C major seven, he would always play something different other than C major seven, and it would work. So Hassan, there was a wood, wood, wood bond club down 12th and Master. And after, after hours, that's where all the musicians used to come and play and share, share ideas. But when Hassan would come in and get on the piano, people like uh, Jimmy Oliver and all the saxophone players around town, they would get off the bandstand because they couldn't play with Hassan because he was so modern. He was playing all these modern chord changes. Every tune that he played, he created his own chord changes and his, his own concepts. And I was determined that I was going to learn this system that he was doing. And it was a great, great system. He had something called the raised line, the uh, augmented, augmented five, and these particular, and then you got a chord called the B flat 25. So when you look at what he, 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 the body of music that he was doing at the time, it was completely different.
When I worked with Max, I worked with him for one year. And Eddie Green had taught me how to circle a breathe. So I was working with Max. So I thought I was doing something very great because I was just playing one note, just holding one note. So we was in Ronnie Scott's in London and I was thought I was doing my thing. I was playing the one note. So Max stopped the band. So he said, oh, Dean, if you're not going to play, if you just want to play one note, don't play it at all. So if from that point on, I started to learn how to move the circle of breathe and play notes as well. Max was this great, great teacher. He was, he had a way of doing things that, that he might not tell you what he's thinking, but you could feel what he was thinking because he had, 
his body movements and his whole philosophy of how he would teach was very, very unusual. So, and as a, a person like Max Roach, who was this great innovator, who was this great drummer, so my concept uh, were to how can I reproduce something that could, could represent this great man. This next piece, uh, I had a wonderful opportunity and experience to play with this great man for the last 22 years of his life, Max Rose. Yeah. And it's a tribute to his twin daughters, twin Scorpio twins. They are, they are, they are Scorpio, as well as Alan Russell and Scorpio. So it's called, it's dedicated to the Scorpio twins. Natural.